Happily Married, number one best-selling author, global entrepreneur, and passionate filmmaker, Evan and his bride remarry in a different state or country every year and are celebrating wedding and honeymoon number 30 this year. Evan is the co-founder of IGWT4Me.com, the world's greatest relationship marketing company as well. He and his bride are championing the Marriage of Greatness movement. Please welcome Evan Money. Welcome everybody to Money 911, where we talk about health, wealth and peace of mind and i know you're excited because you heard the intro for my exciting guest evan money how about that how cool is that and i'm beyond excited because we've already talked about a bunch of cool things before we push record <laughs> but i really like to lead you know i always ask my guests it like it's a mastermind you know what would you name this where do you want to go with this so so of course he said money talks negative negativity walks right <laughs> <laughs> from his book that you can get on amazon but just to roll that out evan why and how would you want to talk about that right now <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh, well it, it's interesting i usually tell beginning podcasters or all you know whatever we're, we're talking about stuff i always say man the, the best thing is just Hit record the second you, you turn on, because that usually get the, the greatest gold of like, oh, man, that's what we were talking about. Right. So right. I remember our our video editor one time was doing a project for us, and she caught me off guard so many times because I'm like, OK, are you ready? You know, are we ready to go? She goes, I've been recording this last 30 minutes. And I'm like, what? She goes, that's all the best from. Right, I'm like, right. all right. So just. Turn it on and leave it on, and here Turn we go. It on but and leave it on, except when you're writing your bio now. <laughs> right, right. Well, joy is joy is the way that it all rolls, and and that's real. That's real yes. life, right? Oh joy yes. Action. Oh yeah. No, and I love the and I, again, I come from a a, a non traditional faith based world. Um, if, for any of you that are fans of the chosen, that's like, love that show. You know, I love seeing the Jesus that is playing chicken in the water in the sea of Galilee with the disciples and having fun. Right. Real, and, real. Yeah. Real yes, yeah. 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 And, exactly. and, and I go to the, I go to the ancient scriptures of the joy of the Lord is my strength. Yeah. It's not the rules. It's not the shame. It's not the right. guilt. It's the joy. And that joy yeah. really is the magic and the attraction and everything. When you have that joy, right? Everything shifts, right? Like right. Dunn Denart says, you know, money is like cow manure. If you <laughs> pile it up, it just stinks. But if you spread it around, then everything grows. And Boom. it's, oh, yeah. yeah. When you do that with joy versus, you know, the miser mentality, right? Or the, yeah. you know, the standard oil Rockefeller, right? The first 50 years, he was miserable. And then he figured it out. Like, oh, if you combine massive income with joy, like, what? Oh, look what you can do and you can give it away. I know, I know. That's exactly, that's exactly it. And it's contagious. Joy is contagious. Yes. And that's why at this point in my life where it's like, when you get like midlife, right? Or beyond and you go, okay, now you take everything that you've been blessed with and how can you repurpose that to help others change the world right and the conscious giving counsel is on my mind you know that's kind of where i'm heading taking people like you that are that are conscious and blessed and in the spirit and taking the that energy of money and using it to help and change the world right Yes. And that's what we were talking about off air. So the yeah. late great Rich DeVos in the 60s, hear me, feel me, watch this 1960s, right? Like way before Chris and R's time, way before that. But he coined the phrase compassionate capitalism. Yeah. And he wrote a book about that. He described how honest, true capitalism 
there is compassion built into that. That's true capitalism is compassionate capitalism to where the byproduct of that is natural joy, natural giving, natural philanthropy, natural, right? Like all of that. And it's like, wait a minute, he was talking about that 60 years ago. Are you kidding me? It's like, this is not a new thing, right? This is, this goes way, way back. So exactly. I love that you are championing that as well. Yeah. And yeah. again, these, these, fresh ideas, right? Of like, well, there's nothing right. to the sun, but it's like, well, nothing. wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. Like what, what I'm getting on the news, you mean, yeah, we, we can, like I said, we can put that over there and say, you know right. what, there are some better ways to live and better ways to look at finances, better ways to look at wealth, better ways to look at energy and saying, wow, you know, we can actually put this all together. Yes. So yeah, yeah. passionate right. capitalism, I'm aligned. Right. Right. Yeah, totally. And, and then the really cool thing about it is it's perfect timing because the way that I see it, you know, like you said, the news or the things that are going off that are crumbling as the world crumbles, God's people rise up. Everybody's waking up. You know, it's a small proportionate to the mass, but it's like it joy is contagious. So yes. as people, as the world goes down, the new, the phoenix rises. Yes. And the, and doing things the new way isn't necessarily AI, right? Yes. But it's, um, you know, almighty, <laughs> almighty intelligent. Right? Yes. <laughs> There's one thing I, that I got to, I got to say this. I just... I hate the way that, because I'm, you know, I'm on the West Coast, and it's really changed because from when I was born here, but I won't get into the all that. But the point is, you know, people go, the universe told me. But the idea is like, go one step deeper to who, what, who, where created the universe. The universe is just a small little piece. Yes. Of, right. And so there's that one thing that's like, get big, you guys. The spirit is in there. You can listen. Because we're all going into a new room, don't you think? We're shifting the legacy into a living legacy into the new room, don't you think? Oh, yeah. No, it is. Yeah, it is a totally, a, no matter, even if your head's in the sand, there's new rooms in the sand, right? right? Like, you can't escape it anywhere you go. Like, things are shifting, things are changing. And to, like you said, you can look at, hey, I can look at the phoenix rising, or I can right. look at the old paradigms that are crumbling. It's like, you know, whatever you focus on, you feel even if it's right. not true. So it's like, hey, let's focus on what we know is true, what we know is exciting, what we know is working, and we know joy <laughs> is always gives us the best results. So let's focus on that in the Phoenix Rising. Yes. Right. And a lot of people, they've lost the trail on how to find the joy, right? Because there's so much preoccupations or chasing after material things or all the things you think are going to bring you joy, Right. But it has to start inside first. Don't you think? Got to go inside and connect with the spirit and then you get the joy. And sometimes people have to process and go through, right, an experience to peel off all the layers of the onion so you can get to the sweetness because there are sweet onions. right? <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. No, we just did a big with our Men of Greatness group, which is an accelerated growth group for men. We do a, a deep dive. And as Joanna Gaines like to say, it's depth over distance. And so we like to go deep and, and really sit with some of these. And what we noticed and things that kept coming up is when men get off track. And again, for the again, it doesn't matter if you're male or female or listening. I got some some great fun tools for you. So men struggle with three areas only. Three, all of men's struggles are in these three areas. You take all, whatever men are struggling with, these three areas, that's it. It's intimacy, identity, and integrity. All of, of the struggles are there. And for a lot of it's the identity, right? And so men get off track because they're focusing, to your point, they were, they're looking at the byproduct right? Hey, I want to focus on the money. I want to focus on the result. I want to focus on this right. outside thing. But that's the byproduct. And when you go down that road, that's why you can't find joy because you're trying to focus on the byproduct versus, hey, what's inside, right? It's an, it's an inside out game. And that's, that's been around for a millennia or so versus the outside in game. So when you lose your joy, when you're trying to get the outside, Right. Like yeah. there are there are players right now in the Kansas City Chiefs that just won their first Super Bowl and they're miserable because <laughs> it, it's worn off by now. They're like, yeah. Wait a minute, I thought I thought something was going to change. I thought I wasn't going to feel insecure anymore. I thought 
I, right. I would know that I have what it take and I'm still insecure and I'm still like, I still have my father's son issues. It's like, yeah. yeah, a football game can't do that for you. You know, an outside thing can't do that for you. Unless you have it on the inside, you're always going to be insecure. Right. Uh, one of my favorite uh, all-time players, again, revealing my age and stage, but Deion Sanders, uh, he told me this one time and he said his lowest point in life is when he won his first Super Bowl. And I'm like, how could that be? Because he kept thinking something on the outside is going to change. Like he already had massive fame. He had massive wealth. Right. He had massive Jerry curls. Like, I mean, he was, he was doing great. Yeah. And he, but those weren't enough, right? They kept wearing off and like it right. never lasted. So he's like, well, I, as soon as I went to the Super Bowl, that'll be it. He said it lasted, mm-hmm. right for this? He said it lasted 15 minutes, Chris. Ooh, that wasn't very long at all. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, 15 I 15 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, he went he went from the highest yeah, high yeah. to 15 minutes in a started in a deep depression, lowest right. point of his life. Cause he's like, it's yeah. not the outside, it's the no. inside. It's the that's, inside game. So you're right on it. Chris. That's it. You know, and that that happened to me, you know. You know, I had my mountaintop experience where I literally I know you probably remember our conversation a few years ago where I left walked barefoot across America like Christ two thousand years ago, lived in faith we were nomadic this is in probably before you were born no, <laughs> you know it was in the 70s but we were nomadic went north in the summer and south in the winter and so i had you know it was amazing we lived that way for 15 20 years totally in faith didn't work for money lived in the spirit and learned how to listen to the spirit on the inside and and never went hungry always provided for i walk in the you know some place and the, i'd open my mouth and the, you know, the word would come out and I never even read it, right? It was like <laughs> plugging in, we'd say, you know, throw away the Bible and live it. You know, it's mm. just a state of being. So all of that said, it was like a mountaintop experience. And then when I came in the world, I got into the, and I was in the world and I started going through the things that I had to go through. Like, you know, got a number one song. Okay. Uh, CD into the Grammys, bro. Oh, okay, you know, you're looking at it, or, or even in a relationship of, you know, 38 years, you couldn't get any closer than close. But the falling inside, it really does, it's almost like you really, it's all on the inside, because even though we interact, it's all going on on the inside, how we respond to things. And so you can have everything given and not be grateful and or have nothing and be grateful and be full of joy Mm -hmm. it's it's, it is kind of like a paradox there right absolutely had to grab a sip of water so it's getting so good okay that's okay everybody remember to drink your water (laughs) half your body weight that's about it most people don't and they're dehydrated but that's another class that's another story but you know we know that money is, you know, it's pers- like you say, persuasion and motivation, but that's just the result. And that, and you know, it's a byproduct of your state. And, and it doesn't, that doesn't mean a lot. It's just, where are you going to drive it? Where are you driving with the gifts that you've been given? What's the highest way or the highest place? So you get to, you bring brothers, right? You can bring men together and you bring women together. You bring both together and, there's something really cool about networking in a group that when I came back from my mountaintop experience and got into some masterminds, it did. It changed my life. I realized, man, I haven't grown up. I'm still five years old with some emotions, right? And in a personal, hey, if you want to quantum things, that's a really, really, I mean, a way to do it, right? Fast way to do it. And it takes away that negativity, don't you think? Oh, yes. So I'm a, I'm a big proponent for us. Again, there's no right, wrong, good, bad, right? It's about, hey, what brings life? And, you know, it's either, hey, what's life giving or life taking away? So what I've discovered and what we call them is accelerated growth groups, because sadly, there's a lot of people doing weird stuff and they call it a mastermind. It's like, yeah, well, that's not a mastermind, but okay. <laughs> uh, so we call them accelerated growth groups. And what we've discovered is, is with men, you keep the men together because yeah. When women are in the room or vice versa, men aren't going to, men default to, you know, chicken chesting and keeping the armor on and I've got it all together. Exactly. When you get a group of men together and you go bone marrow deep in the beginning and you yeah. just get the armor off, 
then it's a magical thing. So we kind of create these nights of the round table where men, we, we curate men that are growth minded because that's the big thing. Got to be growth minded, got to be willing to grow in all areas, willing to play full out. And we specialize in entrepreneurial minded. And so we have a lot of what do we say bivocal, right? We have a lot of guys that are like, hey, you know, some guys have, you know, traditional businesses. Other guys are like, hey, I'm, I'm working over here, but I got these other two businesses going on the side. I'm transitioning out of some and out into the other. And so we get what I say, you know, we put the scuba gear on and we go deep. And, you know, as a facilitator, it's my role to kind of get that room as deep as possible. And some magic comes out when you see guys willing to take, once they start taking off the armor, they start taking it all off. And I say that figuratively, emotionally, and literally. So we literally take their phones away. And then we take their iPhones away. <laughs> you know, their little I watch things. Yeah, and then we take all, like, pull it all away and Good. sit in the room for eight hours yeah. and go deep and do all kinds of different exercises. There's movement. We're not just, again, sitting and meditating, but um, there's times of quiet. There's times of excitement. There's times of motion. And it's just magical when you curate that space, Chris. And I like to tell this story. I think you'll appreciate it. So, um, so yes, I was here in the seventies for sure. Um, so when I was a kid, Star Wars came out, and just that was so magical of a time uh, because I mean, even today, the original Star Wars still holds up, and it's just like, wow, what a masterpiece! But imagine, like again, we're kids watching that, like this is blown away. So uh, I'm. We're on a, a family vacation trip. We're in like the fancy lounge thing, waiting for our plane. And uh, my son picks up one of the catalogs and they had this full sized old school video game, you know, like stand up video game, full size of Star Wars, the vector graphics. Some of you, you folks will know what I'm talking about. And my son was all excited. He said, Dad, Dad, Dad. And he's smart. I think he was about 16, 15, 16 at the time. And he comes to me and says, Dad. You need to buy one of these. I said, Oh, I, he's like, Yeah, come on, dad. I'm like, and I looked at it, I was like, Oh, yeah, I remember this. And uh, yeah, I started thinking about it. I'm like, it's cool, but you know, more of a distraction. And so I told my son, I was like, you know what, son, I'd be open to it, but I said, we don't have a place to put it. I said, I'm not putting it in my office. Because it'd be a distraction for me. I'd want to play it all the time. I said, you know, it's not going in the house. We don't have any screens in our living room, in our dining room, our bedrooms. We only have a certain room with the screen. Cool. Uh, so I was like, well, son, it's not, it's not going to the house and it's not going outside. So <laughs> I was like, sorry. Right. And yeah. so, and so we went on our trip, had a great time, didn't think anything of it. And about a week later, a week and a half later, uh, when we got back, Chris, I hear this flurry of activity in the garage. And I'm like, hmm, now normally my son's real, uh, I don't know the term, I want to say uh, he has a, a kind of a builder gift, right? He can make anything, build anything, do anything. He does what's called kit bashing. For those of you who know, know what that is, he's like totally into that. Um, so he loves, you know, kit bashing, big stuff, little stuff. So I just thought it was in the garage doing some project. So I hear my bride say, you know, call me and says, you got to come see this. So I tootle outside and I'm expecting like he made something. And all of a sudden in the garage, Chris, there is a perfectly swept, clean, (laughs) open space in the garage, the exact dimensions of the video game. Well, imagine that. Depth, width, height, like, because, you know, our garage is pretty well um, we're not, we actually, I put, I have a large car collection, so I have cars in the garage. And oh, then, real cars. Yeah. And, and then we have our stuff pretty well segregated. So it, it, it's pretty regiment, but all of a sudden, yeah. magically, there's this space. Right. And I looked at my bride and, and you know, some of these laws, I looked at my bride and I was like, well, looks like we're buying this game. He created the space for it. <laughs> right. It has to be filled with something. Hmm. Smart. It kid. has to be filled by law. The space was created has to be right. filled. So right. to your point, the, the purpose of an accelerated growth group or a mastermind is intentionally creating space for this growth, yeah. for this awakening, for this yeah. stretching, because intentionality doesn't sneak up on us and break through our, our house, you know, and s- slip through the window. Right. You have to be intentional. You have to create this space. Exactly. So, 
Um, so that's what I love about these kind of groups is like yeah. saying, hey, this is what we're doing. We're creating this space. And guess what? God is going to fill it. There's going to be amazing breakthroughs. That's but it. unless you're intentional, it's not going to happen. Right. That's it right there. And, you know, that's exactly, you know, I, that's a version for people to reach to because the version that I told you of, you know, the mountaintop leaving the world, that's, that was the same thing where you cut off everything on the outside that was distract, like your cell phone and, and then this and chasing after that and living that life. That's the same kind of thing where you just take the time to, and most people don't know how, what to cut off and, and don't want it and probably won't cut it off unless there's a, a facilitator and someone that's walked down the trail before and knows watch the branch and bend your yeah. head and, right? listen you gotta listen and you know all the cues and you walk down that trail a few times you know you know the way to go so that's that's very cool another very cool thing you know that caught my attention you had you had a, a movie words of art and that that sounded really interesting too and maybe you share a little bit what was your conception of what what made you gather you know all of these people together to do this movie ah so very apropos question and hopefully my branding and all this this is you know was this was set up way before podcasting and all this on this thought of the wall so hopefully you can see the movie poster back there yeah uh, but really, it came, actually, you can see that couch back there. Um, it, was a, it was a different couch, but same location. That's where I was sitting, Chris. And uh, quick backstory. So, you know, going back to the early days, my brother and I, born and raised here in Los Angeles. And you know, Chris, there was a time when they actually filmed movies in Los Angeles. Yeah, now, yeah. you know, they, they film all over the place. Yeah. Uh, but so we were exposed to some of that. And my brother and I uh, wrangled uh, the, my mom. I don't know how my mom pulled it off, but she wrangled back in the day a yeah. VHS camcorder, you know, full size right. VHS. Oh. Yeah. And right. so my brother and I were filming shorts before that was even a term. Mm -hmm. And we learned, you know, on a budget with no, you know, just the concept, right? Like, you know, kids these days, right? But just the concept that you can edit a video right on your phone, right? right. Like with a VHS cassette tape, there are no editing, right? right? There isn't like, people don't understand like what it used to take to, to, to edit a movie. You used to have to literally cut the That's film right. and glue it together. And it's That's like, right. yeah. <laughs> so without any of that, it's like, how do you make a short? Well, you have to film in chronological order and you get one take. <laughs> <laughs> because if you mess it up, you got to right. start all over again. So yeah. Yeah. my brother and I were, were trained like this with our shorts. And then that passed and we, you know, life and different businesses and all this. But there was always like this little movie maker inside of me. And I was like, one day I'm going to let him out. So I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting on the couch. I'm watching a documentary that I was really excited about. And uh, as I'm watching it, Chris, I get this awakening. Two Two things. Number one was why should that person have all the fun? Because they were going around interviewing their friends. It was, a, it was a cool topic. It was a great subject. But I'm like, they're having so much fun. Why should they be the only ones having so much fun? And then the second thing was like, how hard could it be? Um, you know, we're not special effects. There's no stunts, right? Yeah. It's not no right. production value. Yeah. It's like, look, I can see the microphone, you know, coming down. I'm like, yeah. how hard could a documentary be? So I made a decision right then and there. I said, I'm going to do a documentary. I don't know what it's going to be about, but we're going to do something. And cool. a That's short cool. time later, I found myself at Jim Rohn's funeral. Mm -hmm. And I was looking around and that was kind of like the who's who. And the, the and I look around, I'm like, wow, all these great personal growth leaders right. are on the fourth quarter, late fourth quarter. Like yeah. we need to do something to honor these people. And so that kind of stuck in my head. And then I'm in the shower, fun ADD side note. I like to tell people all the time, Chris, that everybody owns a $50 million shower. And people say, Ev, you don't understand. I don't live on the, on the West Coast like you and Chris do. You know, my shower is just, you know, full of mold and old soap. And, you know, I don't know, you know, there's no way it's worth $50 million. I say it is because in your shower right now, there are still $50 million worth of ideas <laughs> that you left there that yeah. never made it out of the shower. Right. And you talk about the state. I'm so proud of you, Chris. Like, hey, Walking barefoot for long periods of time, right, without distractions, 
you know, actually allows you to be in tune to a lot of different things. So the only time people really get in that state now, Chris, is when they're in the shower, right? Because their phone's not with them. Right. They get some nice hot water. And it's like, yeah. why don't we get all these great ideas in the shower? So yeah. what I do is I have a waterproof tablet that I got on Amazon for about 20 bucks, you know, that the, the divers cool. use. Yeah, yeah, scuba divers use. So when I get a great idea in the shower, God gives me a great download, That's I write right. it down. That's right. And then I'm able to take that out of the shower and yeah. put it into action That's instead so cool. of leaving it there. Like most of you watching this, all your great ideas, again, still in the shower. So, That's it, right. so right. God gives me this download for words of art. I'm like, okay, I have a title, words of art. Kind of have an idea of what I want to do with this documentary. I'm channeling, you know, my brother and I's early training. And so I realized that, hey, what if we looked at the spoken word as an art form? Right. And primarily from, again, for me, because that's kind of what turned my life around, were the old school motivational speakers, like the Jim Rohns and the Zig right. Ziglers, okay, and, yeah. and the guys like that. And and I was like, gosh, you know what? I, and the Dennis Waitleys, you know, those guys yeah. radically affected my lives. Yeah. I was like, I want to pay honor to them. But as well, the spoken word you see in a faith-based context, you see it in rap, you see it in, you know, uh, you know, political realms, right? Like the oh. classic, you know, again, Martin Luther King movements, right? The I have a dream speech and, you know, Kennedy and ask not what you can do for your country. I mean, those are art forms, right? That's right. Those words shifted, yeah. right? Like Elon Musk isn't doing what he's doing. If Kennedy never said we're going to the moon. Mm -hmm. So yeah. I, I wanted to look at the spoken word as a, as an art form. So that was yeah. the impetus of the documentary. And I just dove in head first, never made a documentary before. Last uh, two fun parts of the long story is I, I go to an event and it was uh, kind of one of those, you know, multi-day ones. And they have like the, the speaking and all that on the inside. And then in the hallway, like big hallway area, they had all the vendors, right? Mm -hmm. And the, the speaker that was speaking, I wasn't totally aligned with. So I'm like, okay, let me just check the hallway and see the sponsors and see what's going on. And I, I, Jeffrey Hazlitt was at that event. I, re I remember that. Um, and I remember talking to this, you know, and, and I, at the time that I went out there, really there, there weren't any sponsors. And I saw one dude like setting up this little light. And literally, Chris, I kind of felt bad for him because I'm like, it's like his booth wasn't set up and I felt like, oh, maybe his stuff didn't come in time. You've been there, right? Where right. Yeah. to the trade show, my stuff's not here. And you're like, ah. oh, so so important. Was, yeah, yeah. And I was like, hi, uh, who are you? He's like, oh, my name's Jeff. And I'm oh. like, hey, Jeff, I'm Evan. And I said, right. did your booth not come? What's going on? He goes, oh, no, no, no. I'm just doing some interview stuff. He quote, his, what he says. He goes, I'm a documentary filmmaker. Oh. I was like, oh. You don't say. So tell me more about that. And then I, you know, verbally vomited my whole idea on him. Yeah, what if we did this thing about artwork and this and this and that? Right. So he received it, wiped it off, right? Right. Handed me a card. Remember those things, Chris? Business yeah. cards? Yeah, I still have some. <laughs> Handed me a card. And I said, thanks. And yeah. the next day, that was Sunday, the next day, Monday morning, I called him up. And I said, hey, Jeff, this is Evan Money. I met you at the event. You know, da, da, da. He goes, oh, no, no, no. I, I know who you are. And he said this, Chris, most amazing thing. He says, I can't believe you called me. And I said, why? He said, do you know how many people walk up to me and go, oh, you're a filmmaker. I've always wanted to make a film. I've always wanted to. And he goes, they never call. I'm like, well, that's not me. I'm calling. Let's take action. Let's go. Yeah. And so it turned out the last big documentary that he made was with Les Brown and some of these other big names. And I'm yeah. like, okay. Yeah. Remember, I created the space. Hey, yep. I want to do this project. And lo and behold, here comes a documentary filmmaker in the personal growth space. And we spent the next year and a half traveling the nation, uh, going all over, interviewing folks and anything that had to do with the spoken word as an art form. And it was such a blast. Yeah. And sadly, I had to edit, you know, 30 plus hours down to an hour and 10 minutes. Mm. But um, we became the masterpiece that's words of art. You can grab that on Amazon. And it, you know, again, it's a specialized audience. It's for those right. with, you know, that want to actually think and contemplate. And it's not, yeah. you know, entertainment. Again, it's not action adventure. <laughs> and it's entertainment. Not right. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So if, if you want to get some, again, tremendous, the, the guests were awesome. I just got yeah. to 
Yeah, Dan nice, Aaron, nice and list, list. Yeah. Zig Ziglar and all yes. kinds of great people on there. Yeah, very, very cool. And and like you said, you there it is. There's the motif. You created this space, and so to to bring it back around when you know your original thing is money talks, negativity walks. So tell everybody what you mean by that. Yeah, I mean you. It, it's a great term. Mm -hmm. And, you know, classic, right? Because I think there's there's a lot of misnomers about money, right? And I, I do these talks about money myths. Right. And so some of my favorite, and we've heard, you know, the classic, you know, well, you know, money corrupts people. And it's like, well, no, that's not true. Uh, people corrupt their money that's because right. of the way they think. That's right. Okay. Yeah. And yeah. so, but again, a lot of people have this shame and guilt and all this weird stuff built into money because of, again, some of the things they've heard, some of these different cultures and some of this, all this different stuff. And so money talks, negativity walks is kind of, kind of that play on of saying, Hey, you know what? Money does talk because people, you know, you hear it all the time, right? People are like, you know, voting when it comes to voting, right? Like the great yeah. term, you know, you don't vote, cast a ballot, you vote with your dollars. Right. Because you can say anything you want, but where you spend your money is how you're voting. That's you know? it. People, you know, in, in the faith-based world, they, they complain all the time about, oh, you know, I can't believe all the garbage is on TV and da 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 But yet they're voting with their dollars for HBO <laughs> or, or, yeah, or whatever else, right? So it's like, you just follow the money, right? The, the money speaks so loud, right? Like, I can't, I can't hear what you're saying. So we got to take that term and another favorite one, I, you know, in that in that book, we talk a lot about taking personal responsibility. So for example, you may have heard the term, again, another money myth, right? That people say, oh my gosh, and I'm so guilty of this until I, I again, had the awakening, but everyone listening and, and hearing this, we've all said this at one time or another, oh my gosh, that's too expensive. Uh -huh. Whether it be a hawk, car, a house, a remodel, whatever, right? Oh, that's too expensive. Well, that's not true because if you make the thing the problem, right? Like those brand new Lamborghinis are too expensive. No, the truth is you can't afford it. Mm. The Lamborghini isn't the problem. You're the problem. The way you're thinking is the problem, okay? Right. There are people that own five Lamborghinis and 10 Lamborghinis and have armies of Lamborghinis, right? <laughs> It's, it's not a problem for them. I, I say that because in my neighborhood, uh, something's going on here, but in my neighborhood, the guy at one end of the street and the other end of the street both bought brand new Lamborghinis. <laughs> and I'm just like, okay. okay, what's going on here? So it's not a problem for them, okay? Right, right. So it's about, hey, if I make the thing the problem, then I'm not taking responsibility because I'm playing the victim. Well, hey, I'm the victim here. Those darn Lamborghinis are just, you know, overpriced. No, yeah. no, no. I need to change the way I think. So purchasing a Lamborghini isn't a problem. So it's that taking full responsibility. But I didn't understand that and also helping people understand like, well, why is my default to irresponsibility? Our, our default, because we have two states, Chris, we're either in a divine state or we're in our human nature. So divine nature, human nature. Human nature is fear, doubt, lack, shame, guilt, all things we know so well, right? Right. Our, our divine nature is like, I don't even have time for any of that stuff. Our divine nature, you're in the flow. Divine nature, right, is joy, That's right. right? That's divine That's nature. Right. That's so right. yeah, so in the human nature side, right, our, our humanness wants to pull us there, okay, and wants us to play the victim. So right. why is that the natural state? The natural state is if I'm the victim, then I don't have to change. Yes, that's right. And yes. that and that's the, the natural subconscious yeah. protector. Oh, don't 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 you know, don't go out there with the unknown, right? Stay here where it's safe. Okay, we don't want to change. We want to stay static. Stay safe. Yeah. Okay. And so it it yeah. in anything you look at, even in, right. in marriage, let's talk about marriage, right? Well, if she would just do this and this and this, then I'd be a better <laughs> husband. Be well, okay. Right? Yeah, it's always the other person, yeah. right? It's right. never me, I'm the victim, right? Mm -hmm. And we, we do that in so many different areas, again, especially around money, because then I don't have to change, right? Rather than saying, hey, look, the way I'm thinking about money, wow, that, that needs to shift. And the, the classic, and you, you've, you've grown up with them, Chris. Hey, in order for things to change, I have to change. In order for things right. to grow, I have to grow, you know? Right. 
in order right. for my finances to grow, I need to grow. And it starts about changing the mindset versus, exactly. oh, exactly. the bank's the problem, or this is the problem, or that's the problem. Right. It's like, no, no, no. For yeah. me, yeah, and, and you'll love this, Chris, because I know you and I, we, again, it's not just a West Coast, Coast thing, but Chris and I share this because, yeah. you know, Chris's house is pretty amazing. My house is full of love. I think it's pretty amazing. But the mm -hmm. biggest room in my house, right, full transparency, biggest room in my house is the room for improvement. There you go. So, the, yeah. And it's always going to be that way. Right on, brother. Like, That's hey, right. how That's do right. I constantly grow and change mm -hmm. and get input and realize that, hey, if I read this book and I put it in bite size, one and two page chapters of, hey, money talks, negativity walks and saying, hey, how can I put myself in a better frame of mind? How can I put myself in a positive frame where I'm doing? And Chris, you're very familiar with the one of the first greatest, you know, social media influencers of all time, the Apostle Paul. Whatever is true, whatever is noble, whatever is wonderful, what is right. beautiful, think on these think things. Those. Yeah. Think on these things. Right. And yeah. so that, that's kind of the premise for Money Talks Negativity Walks is saying, that's hey, good. let's think on these things. Yes. Kind of, again, shift the mindsets and realize, like, hey, yep. look at this. The possibilities are greater than the impossibilities. Oh, wow. I never thought yeah. of it that way before. It's, yeah. It so, is. Uh, yeah. Thank you. It really is a shift. It's a legacy shift and it shifts your mind. And, and the core theme of it is the word and your words are powerful and the thoughts and in the beginning and creation and how powerful all of that is, even the thoughts you're thinking. So the thread just goes through the whole whole conversation we could go on and on here for hours i'm sure we probably will have to have another follow-up right or two, yeah. two, deep dive right and but it's really it is a blast talking to you it's like an old friend that i haven't seen for a while and and but before before we you know fly away here mm -hmm. tell everybody your coordinates and how to get in contact with you Got it. So depending on, as again, a self-diagnosed uh, ADD visionary, um, I'm cut from the same cloth as uh, someone like a Sir Richard Branson. And I, I still remember the first time I read, and again, into my normal dysfunctional life and some of the stuff that's going on, uh, in the typical Western church really doesn't know what to do with entrepreneurs. And so subconsciously you're shamed because you don't have a job and you're not in this thing. And then if you're a multipreneur like me, then you're really shamed because it's like, oh, this guy doesn't even know what kind of business he's in, right? Like, what business are you doing today? Like, what's going on? So I remember reading Richard Branson's book and I literally wept, Chris, because at the time he had 350 companies. And I was like, oh, I only have three. Oh my gosh, what's wrong with like he's got 350? It's like he gave me permission to fully express my greatness because I believe that we're all preloaded with greatness and it's just about letting it out. That's so it. Yeah. my gift, some see it as a dysfunction or a curse being ADD, but that's the gift. So my ADDness allows me to have multiple companies. And <laughs> you see this with, you know, some of yeah. the richest men in the world, like a Elon Musk, right? Like, well, wait a minute, he's building rockets and he's building cars and he's, you know, burrowing and he's doing all this stuff. It's like, exactly. So right. depending yeah. on what core resonates with you, if you want to be a part of one of our men of greatness groups, if you want to stand up and go, oh, yeah, I want to be a man of greatness. Yeah, that's for me. You know, that's something you can find out at evanmoney.com. That has all kind of the, the personal growth listings and all that. And if some of you are listening, go, wait a minute, you know, are you sure you really get remarried in a different state or country with your bride and you guys are doing all kinds of amazing stuff? And yes, I'm the first man that you've probably ever seen that's been married 29 times. Yes. All right. So we have a marriage of greatness movement. So you can go to marriageofgreatness.com and there's some great resources there for people that want to say, hey, you know what? Having a good enough marriage isn't acceptable. I want to have a marriage of greatness. I want to take this to the next level. I want to leave this legacy for my kids of saying, wow. What if mom and dad had a great marriage instead of just a good marriage? Right. So Beautiful. those are some two great spots. And then there's others that are super entrepreneurial minded, but are like, wow, I, you know, I maybe not have the capital that I want or, you know, I'm looking to do something different. So uh, I've been blessed to co-found the world's greatest relationship marketing company, 
where we are reimagining what you can do in that space and saying, wow, just like we talked about off air, Chris, right? How Uber and Lyft reimagined what taxis could be and could do. Exactly. And what they've created is, right? Think about all the drivers that have benefited and saying, hey, I can do this side hustle and all the clients that are benefiting. Because look, I could push my button on my phone and get a car anywhere I want, different countries, same app, whatever. Right. So we're doing that in the relationship marketing space. And you can check out I igwtforme.com and the font that's igwtforme.com and on that note there's a lot of change swirling in the financial districts and realms and you know what dollar is going to be the standard and what's happening with oil and these you know new co- you know coalitions on you know okay we're going to change the money from you know from USD and oil and all this but the magic of the US dollar currency is what's on it. And it says IGWT, in God we trust. Yeah. And to me, that makes the money different. That makes the value different. And that's so, the value. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of where the IGWT comes in is saying, hey, it's not the government we trust. It's not religion we trust. Right. But it's in the God of the universe yes. that we trust. And yes, there are universal laws and there are universal principles, just like the law of gravity. Watch. Okay. That's a law, right? It worked. That's a universal law, right? Yeah. The the law of attraction, the law of vibration. Yes. Those are laws that work. And there's a God of the universe that created all of them. So why why play small when you can play big, like you were talking about, Chris? So those are some of the three quick areas that you can see a little bit about what's going on. And if you want to see a picture of me with hair, oh my gosh, me with hair, you can check out evanlovesusan.com. That's kind of an ode to my bride. And that has all 20, actually, that'll be 30 marriages or 29 at the time of this recording, but 30 is coming up right after this. So all 29 of our weddings on there. So if you want to have some fun and just goof around and say, man, I wonder what this guy looked like with hair 25 years ago. So there you have it, Chris. All right. Woo. Get your pencils out on that. Very, very cool. And everybody, you know, you're, you you got to subscribe because we're going to just keep on rolling with these great shows and they just get better every time. Right. Subscribe down there. Right. <laughs> Push the button. <laughs> Tell your friends. Put a review. You know why? Because we partner with more people and it quantums, quantums, and it goes out everywhere and we can change the world. You are the change in the world. Be it. Live it. And Evan... It's been a complete joy having you here. And and thank you so much for sharing all your gifts. Absolutely, Chris. And you look fabulous. You are fabulous. Oh. You are more than enough. I am so <laughs> thankful to be a guest on this show and share this space with you. And I'm thankful for you being the guide as well, because that's kind of what this show is about, right? Like you talk about, hey, look out for this branch. Hey, look at for this. Hey, look at for this. And that, that's her like, hey, the show's better in. I got my next interview. But <laughs> no. I'm thanking you yeah, for being. No. Yes. I'm no, just no, thanking no, you I don't for... want it to end. Yeah, but I want to yeah. keep hearing all those good things you're saying. How many people? Let... No, I mean, seriously. You, I'm honored. But that's my money right there, Evan Money. You just gave me my, my billion dollars right there. When the kindness and the love that you share, that, that's, I could take that with me everywhere. You can take everything from me, but I have that gift and that treasure and you, and I don't feel it's loose lip. It's from your heart and I, I can feel it and it means so much. And I thank you so much, my friend, for being here and sharing your joy. Yay. Yay. All right. There's so much to learn about healthy money. I hope today's discussion brings you one step closer to securing and protecting your future. So you can get started on the right foot, go to meetwithchrismeller.com and schedule your free financial fitness strategy session. Thank you for listening and please subscribe to Money 911 so you don't miss our next episode, which includes health, wealth, and peace of mind.
Slide 